G'day legends. I hope that you're having a fantastic day and that you've had a fantastic weekend. Now, this video is probably going to be out a little bit later and I may look tired because I had like an eight and a half hour drive interstate today. It's been a very hard week for me. I've been all over the country for some very sad events. But yesterday I drove into Melbourne and met baby Tully. My best friends have just had newborn only three weeks old. So that was fantastic new life coming into the world. Now, today we're going to talk about a lot. Of course, we cannot miss, and we'll talk about it straight off the bat, that money has been passed in America from the House of Representatives. We've been waiting on a decision for this money ever since it came through the Senate late last year, but it's been months and months and months. We've always been optimistic that this would likely come through, but it had been held up and held up. Last week, huge shift of uh, from the Speaker, so that has come through, and we're going to talk at length about how that will come. But this is honestly the first really good news Ukraine has had in potentially 12 months. Like it, for the last six months, it has been buddy, a pretty dire situation. So we'll look at that. We do have strikes to look at and geolocations, more planes getting taken out, both Ukrainian and Russian. A little bit of investigation into that, as well as we do have a pretty in-depth look at the maps. And of course, that Nova Maya Livka, which we talk about a lot, has come officially geolocated under full Russian control. So I mentioned in that that the aid money had passed. So let's have a look at this here. That's way too big. Here we go. Across here, we can see that it has gone in well, overwhelmingly in favour of yay for that to go through, but still with a lot of nays, especially, well, as you can see, from the Republican side of the House. And you can see that then waving the Ukrainian flags here. And from my looking on Twitter, a lot of people are upset about this, of course, like when we saw uh, when Zelensky came in and held up the Ukrainian flag, people saying, in this area here, only the American flag should be flown, hung, regardless of the decision made. But I see a lot of people are annoyed about this, but the money has gone through. It was looking like for a while, like that it was just going to get buried in bureaucracy, but that has gone through. Now, what actually is this? Well, it's $95 billion all up, 60.8 billion of that going to Ukraine, a 26 billion then going to Israel and the remainder to Taiwan and some other little bits and pieces, but none for the southern border. Now, before, firstly, I saw this too. I saw this photograph come up, and this isn't about the decision, but I saw this bloke here, and I wasn't familiar with who this is, this Bill Pascal Jr., and I looked like, how fucking old is this guy? I looked it up, he's 87. I'm glad these people are in charge of the country that's older than my grandparents, um, who sadly aren't with us. But, yeah, uh, hell yeah, America, but that had money that's gone through. Screw Putin and Slava Ukraine. He says, now, what do I think of this? Well, I think this was going to go forward, but I think it does present some issues here. Now, firstly, I think with this, Biden, the Democrats, potentially for the election at the end of the year, may have dug themselves a bit of a grave. Now, nothing to do with the Ukrainian funding, but to do with their audience, predominantly, say, liberal left wing, say, and the $26 billion to Israel, where that doesn't line up. I think that it may be difficult for some voters there. Now, I'm not an American political expert at all, so tell me if you think I'm incorrect or correct on that. But this will have an effect on the morale in Ukraine. Of course, some good news coming and some money coming through. That said, it's not like all $60.8 billion is being handed over in weapons. The majority of it, upwards of $30 billion, is to replenish U.S. stocks. So we're going to talk about how much is this, what effect will this will have. But we know the main problem Ukraine is having is air defense. Air defense can be fixed by funding, and it's looking like the EU and America will strive to fix that to the degree that they can. You're always going to get missiles and drones getting through, but that will be a big one. The second, well, that's the biggest issue for critical infrastructure, but the biggest issue of actual movements on the front line is manpower shortages. Now, of course, with the mobilization just occurred, morale 
and ooh, emotions are very high around manpower shortages, conscription, uh, not being able to demobilize or rotate. I don't think this is enough funding yet seen to fix that off the bat, if it actually can be fixed. And I was talking to a friend of mine with a lot of contacts in Kiev saying there's no men. The, the men have all gone hiding. Like they, the men who don't want to be conscripted or haven't volunteered, they're literally hiding. Now, you can, that was from my friend told me that, of course, I am not there. But is this enough money? Some people are saying if it was three hundred billion, if it was two hundred billion, maybe because what effect did the initial few hundred billion or over hundred billion have? And this and a lot of this is replenishing, stuck, staying in the U.S. economy, not particularly going. We don't know. We know though that weapons may start showing up within a week, maybe a fortnight from this, and as well promised things like air defense, attackums, longer range strike capability. What will have an effect? What we do know then is, and Kiev Independent has warned about this, that before this date, it is reasonable to assume that Russia will then launch major strikes uh, before this supply then starts. So we have the Kiev Independent saying, there's ISW, Russia likely to intensify offensives and mid-closing window of Ukrainian material constraints. Russian forces have maintained and in some areas intensified ongoing offensive operations, likely to exploit persisting Ukrainian material shortages before the arrival of promised Western security assistance. And we know that Ukraine has a limited amount of shells, air defense, all that. And Russia lo looking like that, that hole may be plugged to a degree. I don't know how much that can actually be plugged short term. I think it's still going to take a long time to backfill takes a lot longer than to just keep filled if that makes uh, sense. So we don't know when it will actually fix. It may take it could take weeks or months to really get everything back to you know a stable position then on the front line with this. But we do know Ukraine is in a lull at the moment and Russia will try and take the most advantage of that that they can. So on my Telegram, you should come and join if you haven't. I put up some polls and I, it's hard to word exactly what these should say, but you can see, you know, mid-1300 voters. That do you believe allocation of six to billion to Ukraine will significantly change the situation? Overwhelmingly here is in maybe or no. Now, I sort of tried to zoom in on what I was saying a bit. Maybe this would be better. Will it change the tide of the war? Ukraine will regain ground morale boost and then bring other countries in for support. And this could be this malignant morale boost. Maybe we will see this, that, okay, the US is back in, then the and NATO, other countries in NATO, we need to continue funding and maybe it will spur on this more people's morale It'll have an increase for people for volunteering and it will spur on it. But in this, it's only 5%. My second one is give Ukraine the ability to stabilize the front, but not advance, extending the attritional war that we are seeing. Now, this is where I sit. Yeah, I voted down in something else, but I just wanted to get the results. I had to vote. This is what I think that money will do. If it was in $100, $200 billion, potentially, when we look at the amount of funding Russia is putting into their own military, and what we need to also take into account is Russian weapons, whether they're importing from North Korea, Iran, China, or developing them themselves, are significantly cheaper than Western weapons because, well, materials are cheaper, wages are cheaper, all of this. So dollar for dollar, more bang for buck when, you, bang for buck when you're just talking how many shells there are. And I think this is enough to maybe stabilise the front line, but I don't think from this money coming in next, I'm going to see walking through Crimea. Now, that was the large one. Now, uh, the second largest here will slow down the current Russian advance. So we see that Russia are advancing in, uh, well, they are advancing in areas where they are pushing, primarily in uh, the east of the country, in Donetsk Oblast, and they are going inch by inch, to quote uh, Zelensky, or inching forward, I believe he said. And then the third largest, uh, yeah, third largest here is Russia will continue advancing at the current pace. These people think that this won't have that much effect. I just wanted to know what my audience there, well over a thousand people, thought on that. But I know that these can be skewed by your audience. But I'm more sit in this that it may help to stabilise the front. I think the most help that we will see is. Of course, to give tanks and artillery and all this, you need to train people on that. We know there's a manpower shortage. I think in the short term, what it will stabilise most is the air defence. It will stabilise the air power and that shift in air power that we've seen Russia have. Therefore, if they don't have the freedom of movement of Su-34s and other aircraft, well, to controlling those fabs or critical infrastructure, 
then we'll see that. But people are saying, yes, but before that comes in, Russia, through their long-range bombers, their strategic bombers, will try and just crush uh, the um, critical infrastructure, power grid, all of that. So, again, we're not exactly sure, but it is very good news for Ukraine coming through in a time where there's been month on month, week on week, just bad news. And, of course, that has an effect on people's outlook to this war as well as then uh, volunteering. Now, I thought before, I'm like, of that, you know, if it's going to cost $100 million to have a Democratic vote, I think the American people would like that. And the majority of, like, the comments I've looked at through people seems to not be very negative on this. But, I, again, I don't really know how Twitter's algorithm works and maybe Twitter pulls a, a certain demographic I don't know, but I do know that it's very good news for Ukraine, and it has definitely, as of today, extended the war at least 12 months. Maybe that is bad news, but I'll let you guys up to you what you think of this. Now, we do need to have a look at some strikes. Now, yesterday, yesterday, day before, maybe the day before, we looked at footage from Fighter Bomber saying that they'd hit three MiG-29s near Dnipro at an airbase. 100 kilometers from the front line, the Russians hitting these with uh, systems. And of course, some other bloggers online uh, have said, no, these were uh, not decoy aircraft that got struck, these MiG-29s, but these were uh, aircraft that had sat there for an amount of time and had just been pillaged for all the parts off them. And I said, look, I can't deny or confirm this. Um, the person who made this claim is a pilot, um, but not a fighter pilot, the Swiss pilot. Um, but there is more footage has come out today with Ukrainian pages talking about this. So we don't know how many got taken out the other day, but Noel Reports has spoken about this and said, bad news as well, Russian recon drones managed to penetrate Ukrainian airspace much deeper recently. A MiG-29, an S-300 and Pelican a 70, uh, 79K6 radar were damaged, destroyed at this airbase near Dnipro. This comes in addition to yesterday's footage, so the footage we talked about, which showed an S-300 launcher, S launcher being hit, which we know that was definitely hit, and three MiG-29s of which one was out of service for a while already. So the other two against what other Ukrainian bloggers were saying, the other two seemingly were in service. So I guess that's confirmation-ish, if you want, on that, that two of those three that from the other day were legitimate hits and one maybe being out of service rather than all three out of service. This is why it takes maybe a few days to come through. But the S300 was the big part in this, but roughly 100 k from the front line. The big concern in this is this is an airbase, Air bases should have the most allocation of air defense. And we have seen Russia have a huge increase in their ability to have ISR assets and targeting assets directly over air bases with planes at them where that should be the most amount of coverage. And we have seen this penetration success more and more. And this should be a concern when the F-16s come in. Will, well, is this is it going to be used if they're striking these? So we had two taken out the other day, one out of service, unsure how many parts or anything. And then today, more footage, which has then confirmed this. And we'll look at what Fighter Bomber says. Here is a MiG-29. Let's take this down. And we can confirm that this was loaded, ready to rock and roll. So we see then large, I'm guessing, a tornado or a scanner strike here. Someone can pull me up on that. Maybe a tornado M, but seeing by uh, this uh, sort of S. Uh, anyway, um, by the strike here. And we can see then what we're looking for is then this burning off, cooking off. This shows that it had either weapons on board and or fuel. Now here we see then another S300 system then being struck. And as we know, when you hit air defense, this cook off fireworks display show and that system being taken out said to be in the same vicinity. So this is a concern. This is a wider concern, not just the loss of that plane uh, and the system, but the ability that Russia is able to put drones in the sky over the top of these systems that are air defense, similar to like the S-400 that was confirmed taken out down in Crimea by Ukraine. But having you know assets over these should be a large concern for the safety and survivability then on the ground. And sadly, fighter bomb was right. One full fuel and loaded MiG-29 was destroyed here, the first part of that. And then the radar of this and the S-300 to radar um, and at least one more then taken out too so that's a large large loss up in Dnieper and if we have a look at the map 
up in here. The base sits just to the south of there. Now, this is what Fighter Bomber has said. Friends, I'm reporting in Nipro no longer wants to be a military aviation airfield after today's control strike. It decided to carry out the order of the blah, 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 demilitarize all sorts of special effects, you know, cooking off. Um, hardly support S-300 position taken out as well. So, oh yeah, we know brand new Ukraine, a Pelican array decided. So we know largely it's down there confirmed from both Ukraine and Russian sources. Now we know that Russia lost the Tu-22 uh, backfire plane the other day, the first one taken down. Now this has been all over of was it a modified Ukrainian S-200, uh, S-200 system or a fire in the engine bay? And we've spoken at length about it seems more likely. It's not. It's plausible either way. But if you were to put more likely, it's more likely that it was a mechanical issue. Uh, from what we've looked at in the limited knowledge and air defence knowledge, and you've got to remember these these S two hundreds were retired by Ukraine over a decade ago uh, for being just not usable anymore. We know there's been modification. We know they're back on the front line. We know this is in range, but curvature to the earth, radar targeting. Uh, seems unlikely on the surface, but the MOD, the Ukraine, uh, so United Kingdom has come out with this. Now, the MOD, we know it's pushing narratives as well, but Russia carried out airstrikes using uh, Tu-22 M3 backfire. C, a strategic bombers likely in its targets in southern Ukraine. Defense intelligence of Ukraine announced they had shot down one of the bombers with reports circulating line that appeared to show a backfire coming down. Doesn't appear to show it, bloody shows it. The Russian Ministry of Defence confirmed that a backfire had crashed and the search and rescue mission was ongoing, but did not admit the shoot down. However, it is almost certain uh, that reports of an S-200 and SA-5 being used are accurate and that this was another successful Ukrainian action against the Russian Air Force. This uh, this system is likely the same system used to shoot down a Russian A-50 mainstay over the Sea of Azov, of course, but a lot closer. It has been geolocated of where that backfire went down three to four hundred kilometers away this is the first instance of a strategic bomb being shot down by ukraine air defense systems it's highly likely that the rush uh, that russia has now sustained at least 100 fixed wind combat aircraft losses to date still for the size of the air force i'm not saying it's not a lot but it's not crippling at at all even if we say that only 50 percent are actually air worthy with this i i don't know i just think this is Grab, grabbing onto, regardless, the plane is down. And being a maintenance issue may actually show a bigger issue than S-200 bloody hitting it because, well, uh, you're flying these, you know, can these actually be replaced or upgraded back in? Maybe we're going to have more, maybe Russia's going to have more issues with these. Regardless, it's down. But I I, I think it's grabbing onto something that is a intelligence morale boost more so than it being hit. If you've still got Su-25, Su-34s dropping fabs just relentlessly right on the front line both both east and in the south and way more strikes hitting in critical infrastructure centers how then are you able to hit something 400 k's away with an older system and not those i don't know that's just what i'm putting out there you can hate me dislike dislike go for your life uh and of course then and that's minister here um you said has made an immense breakthrough of shooting down a russian strategic bomb for the first time out in until it's showing russia has lost 100 so yeah, I don't know. I'll let you guys argue about that in the comments. Uh, so let's then have a look at the maps. So we do have some very interesting bits and pieces. So here's Ukraine, the centre of the capital of Kiev. The red areas occupied since 22 and the purple since 2014. Now, this map doesn't show much change, but regardless, we're going to go over it. So let's have a look then in Bakhmut. Now, we go back yesterday, today, no changes. We do have some footage. Of course, what Russia is trying to do is get into Shasiv Yar. If you looked at my video yesterday, speaking from Intel on the ground, that people aren't happy that Ukraine has deployed their special forces into here, claiming that's not really their position and the way that, you, uh, that Russia is using their VDV with the Spetsnaz of hit and run missions here, saying it should be more used like this. Regardless, uh, this one, let me just fix myself up. This one should be out in this map before I get confused on myself. So here we have Buck Moot. This is then what uh, Syriac is then reporting. So this is Ivanovsky down in here. That just a slight movement out from here. The Russian army continued increasing buffer zone around Ivanovsky with new advances towards the channel. Now, of course, uh, MOD, Deep State Map doesn't show this, but we have a Ukrainian source of NOAA reports who's become more and more on the channel with these maps shows this exact movement out here so let's confirm that this down from ivanovsky was definitely extended control now some footage has come out too 
of increased use of those fabs on Shasiv Yar. This is what I speak about with the with the air defense, that this is critical because the, the fabs, and this was from Ukrainian pages, is saying they're just taking the whole area to dust with these fabs and freedom of movement of the Su-34s, Su-25s over these areas. So you can just see massive fab 500 um, UMPS, whatever they are, strikes here. So at least five or six and then just bringing the area to dust, making it just unworkable for defence and so hard, just bringing it down to rubble. And this is what people are saying. The concern is, is just fully flattening areas before sweeping through with full freedom of movement of those fighter aircraft and fabs on the front line. And of course, like we're seeing, at least three of those big 29s potentially taken out as well. Now, Let's just move down then. We see in Avdivka. Now, what do we see on this map? No changes, but we will talk about yesterday. We did see this move out from Pervomayevsky, Nivelsky area, but nothing really on this map. Well, one thing we did get, and I think it was later yesterday, was we got up here. This go like fat, then fat, then skinny, then fat, sort of like my life. So it has shown a change here. So a movement of the Russians into these first blocks up here trying to encompass this area we presume but we have then that movement up in the north here this is confirmed by noel reports another one so moving into these first blocks up here now let's have a look then on Suriac reports so we see this same movement into these blocks as well as a movement down just to the just down to the south that doesn't show up but we know this movement up in the northern blocks 100 percent as well as it's saying another movement out just to the uh, sort of northeast out of keramik or to the east of keramik up right here but not confirmed over separate maps now in uh avdivka itself seminivka one thing we have spoken about is potentially the movement across the first line of defense here in seminivka and how difficult this would be from someone on the ground for the dead ground and the rolling hills that sit in here but Surak is showing that there was a large Russian expansion of control across the line of defense here of course that first line after the fall of avdivka and some area now the mod map is showing this, this is gray zone here this is showing red uh, NOAA reports this map from a few days ago shows there was a Russian bridge head across here. We're not 100% sure, but this will absolutely be something that it develops over the coming few weeks. Now, Novomaya Livka, this is the main area we need to talk about. So we'll come back up to Madiinka here, but this is the main change. I believe we see one just here. Look at that movement. So Novomaya Livka then has come under. 95% or more control of the Russian forces. So I'll be showing you multiple, multiple maps, geolocated stuff on this. Let's look at um, Syriac um, map updates here, showing a fair bit more control of this map, but uh, as well to the Western movement, similar. Russian army took full control over this dashes of Novomalivka, 90% of it. Uh, however, Ukrainian army didn't completely retreat from the locality, but troops still present in the houses of the Western outskirts now i'm not sure exactly when that went live because then we have the noel reports map additional russian images show russian forces managed to reach the western outskirts of Novomaya Livka. it is highly likely that ukrainian troops have left the settlement looking for better positions to the west so this is from ukrainian sources saying it's larger movement than uh even the suriak was saying so this is see this road where it dips down to the right dips down here saying that this has come under complete control here more so than even than the suriak and gives the geolocation as well what sits just here above see this dip down sitting just above here we see this is the photograph shared as well of these russian troops here with their unit marine flag now there was some video too i will just say these guys you know you're running cans on weapons multi cams um, high cut helmets, you know, tactical sort of body armor, like skinnier body armor, do appear to be higher level fitted out kitted guys in this area. That's just my observation as a soldier. But we do see that guy on the left here who's speaking. I sadly don't have this translated, but we do know that he's bloody, I'm guessing that's O blood type. But either way, you can see this patch. Now, looks awful similar to a Wagner PMC patch, if you'd ask me, who, you know, would. We know it's been disbanded, but it's been disbanded. Um, but it's still present in a lot of areas and would make sense for the better kitted out of this gear as well as older soldiers' career beforehand. So that is very, very interesting to look at. Now, 
No other real shifts on this map anywhere. But then we come back up into Madienka. This is where I want to look. Now, we did see an expansion of control yesterday out from Palveda here. So that movement up there. Now, we do have one uh, Surak map, map update just here. So we do see that this control lining up with then what the MOD map is showing. Similar level of control, maybe a little bit more to the west, but... Either way, regardless, it's showing the same. But you can also see where the high ground is sitting here, where it's saying these pushes out are trying to come. Russian army made new advances between Hrovka and Palbeda. It is important to note that the advance is occurring in the upper zone of the this front. The seizure of these heights will be elementary to monitor the movement of the Ukrainian army in Hrovka and this area, as well as to reach the stronghold of Kurokove. So it's going to be just interesting to see, of course, this is the stronghold up here, this push out as well to try and get this sort of Ugladar Novomaylivka front where Russia is having success and does hold the initiative on this front. Legends, hope we got through all that we needed to. Glad to be back here. Videos will improve. Sorry about the last couple of, or last week with some of the quality and whatever I was doing my best that I could. So look after yourselves. I'll speak to you very, very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.